Welcome to a brand new year, and that means a brand new year of Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every Tuesday, every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. It's a brand new year. It's never going to end. Tutorial Tuesday forever. If there's something specific you'd like to see, obviously let me know down in the comments. But this week, we're going to dive into Lightroom Classic, and we're going to take a look at editing a portrait. Now, we've done this a few times in the past, but we're going to work with different AI tools within Lightroom, which are going to make your life a lot easier. So that's masking tools, not generative fill and things like that, just masking tools, which using AI, actually, it's just a lot easier to be able to do that with actually some built-in tools into Masterroom to, to sort of automate some of the jobs you might want to do. Let's just see how easy this is to actually edit now and get looking very professional and exactly the way we want. Let's dive in. Okay, so we are going to be working with this photo today. This is actually a portrait that I took on the Fujifilm GFX 100 RF, which is a really, really lovely camera to actually be doing work like this with. And we're gonna kind of work with this a little bit. This is a JPEG as well, so we're not working with the raw file, which makes this a little bit a little bit interesting actually, because it limits us a little bit as to what we can do. Now, the great news is I have already, I think, captured this from an exposure point of view and in terms of the colors and white balance and stuff like that, I'm pretty happy with where this is in that respect. So we can still work with this absolutely. And there's some great tools for us to dive in with immediately. So let's do exactly that. First and foremost, let's automate some of the jobs that we would normally do uh, ourselves and manually by using some of the AI tools within Lightroom Classic. So over on the left, we've got these different presets. Let's look at adaptive portraits. Now, if I click this drop down here, we have a number of different options here. And each of these are going to automatically apply different masks to the image and then actually edit some of those masks for us, which just saves us a huge amount of time. Now we can go in and change all of those. We can change the masks themselves. We can change all of the edits, but it gives us a great starting point. So for example, if I mouse over Enhance Portrait, you'll see that it immediately will do a few different things to the portrait. Glamour Portrait is gonna do a little bit more. You can kind of see it's relatively, relatively subtle. Let's look at Glamour Portrait, because I think this is probably a more of a glamour shot like that. So let's click on that. I think that looks great already, but we can actually go up to the masking panel here and see exactly what this has done. So it's applied a few different masks here. Facial skin, which it's looked to kind of uh, soften a little bit and just make that uh, a, little bit, a little bit softer, a little bit cleaner, uh, just sort of clean that up in a very subtle sort of way. We've got the eyes being kind of brightened and just made to pop a little bit. The hair is being affected. You know, if I was to click this off and on, it's just a little bit more clarity and a little bit more going on there. The eyebrows, the lips, the teeth as well. We don't need that because there's no teeth in the image. So I'm gonna delete that mask. But immediately this is looking really quite nice. And we can click on a few of these others as well. I'm gonna click smooth facial skin. Enhance eyes, let's click that as well. This is kind of add, adding to what we've already done here. Let's click on texture hair, but I'm actually gonna come up here and bring the amount down quite a bit to something like 24, something like that. Let's also click on enhance clothes. Is that gonna do much? Yeah, let's click on that. I think that's looking pretty good. I think this actually looks so much better already. Let's look at the before and after quickly. So this is where we started. This is where we've got to. You can see there's some subtle differences in the skin, this is before, this is after. We're just doing those kind of initial cleanups of the image, which I think looks really, really good actually. Now we can also come over to adaptive subject, which we can use separately. And that's gonna help to maybe make the subject pop. If we were to mouse over pop here, you can see that's probably a bit too much actually in this particular image. Although actually I don't, I don't hate it. Light maybe looks quite good. So let's look at something like balance contrast. Let's look at something like light. Let's click that. We can come up here and actually bring the amount down and bring that down to something like something like 64. Now that looks that's looking pretty nice actually, I think. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is come in and manually mask the rest of her skin just to sort of soften that a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and create a new mask. We're gonna go select people. Lightroom's gonna detect the people in the scene. We're gonna select her. And then we're gonna actually get a few different options here. And I'm gonna select body skin. Let's create that mask. And I'm just gonna come down to texture and clarity. I'm gonna bring that texture down a little bit and the clarity down as well. Just gonna soften that up 
And I think that immediately looks really, really, really nice, actually. This is stuff that I would do manually in the past. It's just an awful lot easier now working uh, with Lightroom Classic with these new kind of AI tools to be able to mask it automatically like that. Just takes a lot of the time out of the process. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually come in and do a linear gradient, which I'm going to bring in from the right, something like this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and intersect the mask with the background because I just want to darken that side of the background there. So something like that which I think looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and do another linear gradient, something like this. So it's coming in from this left side where it's a little bit lighter. And we're gonna bring the exposure up a bit. Let's come down and do some negative dehaze as well, which I think just brings that kind of soft daylight coming through that nice diffuse light as well. That looks really good. The overall image is perhaps a little bright now. So I'm gonna bring down the overall exposure just a touch and I'm going to bring down the shadows a little bit as well because I want that to be a little bit more poppy in terms of the contrast I brought the whites up there a touch as well I'm just going to bring the blacks down and what I might do is come into this uh this mask here and just bring that exposure down again just so we get a little bit of the contrast of light to dark in that background and the next thing we could do is actually bring in a linear gradient from this side Let's go ahead and intersect that mask with the subject. And we can just bring down the shadows a little bit and the blacks. And that's going to help actually just, because the shadows are naturally on, on the right-hand side, that's going to help really just make that contrast pop on our subject. And in fact, I might just bring the exposure down a touch on there as well. And we can still go in and actually move that linear gradient mask as well if we want to. Uh, so I might just bring that back over to the right just a little bit. Okay, I think that's looking really, really good. Let's look at a before and after of the overall photo. Let's close the masking panel for a second. This is where we started. This is where we've taken it to. I'm actually really, really happy with that. That looks great. Let's bring the contrast up of the overall image. We've not done much with the actual kind of global sliders, which affect the entire photo. We've, we've pretty much just been using masks here, which is actually really cool. It means, that, it means that the overall photo initially was in a good place, which is great. Let's go ahead and actually just boost the clarity a touch as well, nothing too crazy, and a little bit of vibrance to the image as well. Now, we don't want to get too mad with the colors because we are working with a JPEG, so it is going to fall apart a little bit quicker than if, if it was a RAW. But I'm actually just going to bring the hue of the orange down a little bit just to bring out some of the skin tones. I, I like that. If I bring it too much, it starts going a bit too red, but I, I quite like something like that. I don't think I really want to do much else to the image. I might bring the yellows down just a touch as well. Otherwise, we can come over to the saturation. I might just boost that orange just, just a touch when it comes to saturation. Now let's look at a final before and after. So that's before, that's after. I think that looks really nice. I love the lighting. We've kind of softened it up, but kept it looking very natural. It's very much a glamour portrait. I really, really like it. And it really couldn't be easier, to be honest, in Lightroom to do this kind of stuff now. It's so nice to be able to edit portraits. It's quick, it's easy, and you can get some really, really stunning end results very easily because of all these automated tools that you can use. It just makes your life a lot easier. And we haven't used AI in kind of any generative way where we're adding to the photo anything that's not real. It's still absolutely something we could have achieved completely manually. This just makes our lives a lot easier. So for me... This is a completely reasonable and good way to be able to use those AI tools to actually help with your photo editing. Now, I'd love to know if you use any of these tools, if there's anything else you do that maybe we've not touched on here for your portraits as well. But of course, I'd also love to see any other tutorials that you would like to see in future Tutorial Tuesdays. I'm always keen to make the stuff that you guys actually want to see. So absolutely let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see in future tutorials. Otherwise, we've got loads of stuff planned for the rest of the year for Tutorial Tuesday, editing, practical, all kinds of stuff. I look forward to seeing you in all of those future videos. Of course, there's a full list of all the kit we use for all this stuff as well down in the description so you can check that all out for yourself. Until then though, I will see you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.